And uh, now we are here with uh, Indigo Coffee. Coffee, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Great opening sequence. Uh, loving it. Everybody's awesome for showing up for this event. And thank you, you know, thanks so much for having me out. Yeah, um, Indie Coffee, uh, you're a relatively new streamer. Why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Um, so it actually all started uh, by by accident. Um, yeah. Myself, Eric, <laughs> and <laughs> a bunch of others. We were all previously on Fate. Uh -huh. And so just kind of a long story, uh, just to sum it all up. Eventually, we all just kind of went our own ways. Yep. And then some went to Cetra, some went to Visipor, some stayed at 9R. Um, a few of us went to uh, Eden. And, and then once I came over to Eden, um, we just started, you know, just having Guild Wars like normal. And then eventually, uh, it just came across that I would start streaming. Uh, one of my buddies was like kind of pushing for it. Uh huh. And then so I just. Who said, is you know, who is that buddy? Call him out right here. <laughs> so my real life friend, um, his uh, gamer tag is Senna, but then uh -huh. also uh, Meat Meat Shield. Meat Shield, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, he's I a would be here. Yeah, I he's a sweetie. For him. <laughs> um, now you mentioned uh, Cetra and all of those. There's probably a lot of people um, in chat right now who have no idea what those guilds are. Undoubtedly, there's a lot of people here who do or in those guilds. But what are what is Cetra? What is uh, Eden? What is you know Visipor? What are those guilds? Yeah, so those are the top three guilds. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually it's uh, Cetra, Visipor, Eden. And then we have a, a wide array of guilds that's within like the top 10 that are also very close and climbing. And so I just tend to focus on the uh, guild battles that happen between Eden and then just whoever we come across that day. And so I think it's great. And I, I think people find it good uh, seeing what the top tier you know teams are building yeah. Uh, what kind of offenses that they're running, what kind of defenses they're running, how they're tweaking their AI to match the guild map, and then why they turn on certain things or turn off certain things. So um see a lot of people always show up for it, and so I hope they enjoy it. Yeah, I agree. Um, In kind of like out there in the high-level guild world, you know, I'm not even up at that level, and it's hard for me to talk about that level fully. Why don't you tell us a little bit about like what your day looks like for guild battle, like what you guys do and uh what you guys do special or different so a lot of people probably won't believe it but we actually as Eden <laughs> itself, we, we really don't plan for anything mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can actually see that because uh, a lot of times our defenses get cleared fairly easily yeah um but we usually just you know we the only thing that we have set up are like waves so we'll have waves of attacks and then outside of that everything is free for all uh, most people know exactly how strong their comp is, who they can target. And so it's just a choose your own kind of thing and then move on to the next day. And I would say that's pretty abnormal for top tier guilds, right? Very. I think uh, Visipor and Cetra, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe they have shot callers who usually run um, the targets for, especially against like, you know, the tougher teams. So whenever mm -hmm. uh, Cetra versus Eden, Cetra versus Visipor, or ever vice versa. I'm pretty sure they have like shot callers that call throughout who to attack and whatnot. They're saying in chat that they do. So clearly they are here watching us right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which, when you guys go up against a guild, which is your least favorite guild to go up against? Ooh, least favorite. Mm, I think it would have to be probably Cetra, just due to the way that they structure their defenses. Um, for the most part, they're very coordinated and they usually they try to throw people in for like a like a curveball. So let's just uh -huh. say, for example, uh, the beginning of this Guild Wars map, right? Everyone was still running the Warrior of Light Ayaka Kill Fae because that was the strong meta from the previous map. Uh -huh. And then while I was streaming, we basically showed countless attacks of how to destroy that comp, like easy six stars. Gilgamesh walk up, just start slapping people and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then eventually we started to see it transition after showing those attacks. It started transitioning more to uh, pulling Kilfe out. And then they did um, more like an Agrius with the Warrior of Light Ayaka, something more tanky, something more status RNG style. And then eventually that all came down to that. And then whenever, when Cetra came up last against Visipor, they threw it up for a curveball again. 
uh, because they saw a lot of attack comps were changing. It wasn't all, you know, kill phase on offense, uh, 100% accuracy hitters. And yep. so they ended up changing their whole defense to have a Worry of Light, Ayaka with a Venera or some type of evade comp because nobody was pushing uh, their offenses to attack evade comps. Yep. So yeah, I think it threw Visipor for a big curveball. And then that's just, they like to do that on defense. And so it's awesome to see. I think Guild Wars now has finally become more of like a triangle matchup. And then it's like more like chess, right? So you're trying to picture what uh, the guild is going to build on defense and then whether or not they're going to change it from the previous match or the next match. And then if they change it, then you're trying to change your offense to match them as well. And so, so it's just a constant struggle. What do you mean by a triangle? Are you talking uh, so like uh, rock, paper, scissors almost? Uh, yes, actually. And so, okay, so before like two maps ago, right? The, mm -hmm. evade, meta, the evade meta was at the top of the pyramid. Yep. So if you had, if you had Venera, Catone, Sid, like you were crushing in Guild Wars because before that we didn't have the, the skill toggle. And then we also didn't have consecutive accuracy hitters like Kyofe. Yeah. So Ayaka was the only other person that could do it. But then will she cast Holy? No. Uh, we have Sharpshoot on Fred and Lucia, but will they cast? Because that was that know. was that was before the ability toggle too. It, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Evade was king. And then the next uh, next banner or a couple banners, Kyofe came out. And so once Kyofe came out, she was wrecking all the evade units and so then you started to see all the evade units slowly go away and then it was kind of more magic focused yep and then after that happened then you kind of had slash and whatnot come back in so you have evade you have magic like 100 percent holy and then you have slash comps yeah i and would so say it's so kind of like a big triangle like that yeah do you think that's um healthy for the game like do you think that's a good direction for it to go Oh, absolutely. It's boring when you're facing the same thing uh -huh. and then everybody is running the same thing. Yep. Um, I, I think it's great for the game and it's great for the life of the game uh, when people can use what they enjoy and then make that work. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see that the comps are starting to open up and then as more characters come through, I'm sure it'll continue to evolve. Um, how do you feel about... The upcoming limited time guild battles that are coming up, like I'm excited for them, but I'm curious being in a top tier guild where suddenly being in a top tier guild doesn't matter at all because entering into these battles, right? All of a sudden, everybody is going to be ranked differently again. And it's like throwing you into the general pool. Are you ready for that? Honestly, we have, none of us have even spoken about it. Um, it will take away from the whole whale effect. Uh -huh. uh, just due to the fact that you have to bring it within that cost level. And so you can only use certain units. You can only use certain like vision cards and whatnot. So I think it'll take more planning, more brainstorming and trying to be more creative than just like straight up brute force and just put a bunch of max VCs and characters in. Um, another question. What level are your guys' statues? Have you hit level six on any of them yet? We have. Uh, no. Nah. The one on the furthest right, I think, was that lion statue? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, we hit six on lion statue, like, uh, maybe, like, a few days or a week ago. Now, you gotta tell me, does it change, right? Like, does it start glowing or anything? I haven't seen anything different. <laughs> outside, outside the fact you get, like, a few percentage or whatever that you don't even notice. <laughs> I didn't see anything, nothing special. All I want is for it to start glowing. Uh <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Square Enix, if you're watching, you guys should change some throw that in yeah yeah if anyone's out there justin um <laughs> <laughs> says justin has 100 percent creative control over the game uh <laughs> so besides guild battles what's your favorite type of content to do so outside of guild battles uh i really love messing around in arena um, mm -hmm. i i know i think most people that you know they want to just advance you know quickly and get to the right. ranks and then and so they just look for comps that they can beat and then they'll switch their characters around and whatnot. But I usually tend to try to find a comp that I can just run at anyone yeah. and then not have to worry about, oh, let me move this person to this side. Let me have to switch yep. off this equipment and whatnot. Yep. And so I think finding that good mix is uh, is definitely uh, that a challenging part that I like to do for Arena. That's my favorite side to it because... I'm very similar to you, I feel like, because uh, there's when I try to do different arena builds, uh, I don't think about like, oh, I'm going to build five different arena teams and then 
I'm just going to switch between all of them so that I win 100% of the time. Like, I want to build those teams that are almost like a brawler team or like a universal team. And I think that's a different thought process when you're looking at gear and espers and VCs that a lot of people don't think about. Oh, absolutely. I 100% agree to that statement. Uh, I just think, I mean, when you know what team you're attacking, you know what espers they have, you know what vision cards they have. I mean, it's a handicap against them. And so if you're taking advantage of that handicap, there's, I mean, yes, it is auto, but at the same point, there's like nothing behind it. If you just, it's like hitting an easy button. Exactly. It's like hitting an easy button and being like, yeah, I can play the game. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I cannot think and uh, just switch my team comp to counter the enemy comp. Um, (laughs) And for me, that takes the fun out of it. Um, I really, I just really don't enjoy uh, doing that type of stuff where it's like, there's no, I mean, there, there is a point, but there's not a point at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I'm never obsessed with trying to get into top 100 anymore. It's just always been about the fun for me in arena. And I think that's why I'm looking more forward to the live PVP with the cost features, which we'll talk more about when prodigy comes on, uh, because I've never been much of a live PVP guy. Um, I don't know how you feel about that. Um, but I'm excited for the cost feature coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, I've honestly, I've never done live pvp actually i can't say that i started, <laughs> ne- I started never never <laughs> i started live v- pvp at the beginning um but i don't know um uh, outside of just doing like the you know the daily five for your uh, mission rewards or whatever the challenges right and then i just kind of stopped doing it and then once you advanced in rank too much eventually you just couldn't pair or you were facing like crazy whales or whatnot and so it just it didn't seem fun at that time Right. Um, but but definitely watching like Prodigy and like uh, Danny B do their live matches. Yeah, uh, that was so good when they were doing their final match with Long Time. Oh, I think, yes. we, I think we have Long awesome. Time in the chat right now, too. Uh, so shout out to Long Time for hosting those tournaments, man. Like, shout out. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> even though I've never been in one because I'm going to get my ass kicked in it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would definitely be fun, though. Like if I think somebody was mentioning, you know, doing a content creator cup or something like I mean, oh my I god experience. You <laughs> have experience. i'm sure there's plenty of others and so it'd be it'd be something interesting fun for people would... to see like watching us trying to <laughs> move around like oh is this gonna hit oh i don't know the range it <laughs> would it would literally be like everybody knocked out the first round and then prodigy and daniel boone in long time in the top three like that's all only... yeah <laughs> We'll have to make rules to where they can only use like uh, SR characters only or something. Oh, give them a handicap. Make them. Exactly. Uh... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they would probably still find a way to win against us. Like the fact that they have different strategies that they can implement and stuff. I think I don't know if you saw the one. Well, I think you did with Daniel Boone and Prodigy where they had mm-hmm. the uh, limited restraints on where they couldn't use VC cards. Yeah. I actually I would enjoy live <laughs> PVP a lot more if like i'm hoping the cost system does this but if it wasn't just so much about like one shot killing right or very similar to arena where it's like yeah i'm just gonna get your counter comp and kill you yeah uh it would actually be a lot better to see if you took off espers and vcs yeah because at this at this point in the game everyone should have pretty similar about the same equipment and so the characters are the same equipments are the same so now who can better strategize who can better you know use their turns more effectively um because espers people will have different level espers as well as vision cards so if you take all all that out the mix then it's even it would be i would love to see something implemented almost like uh, final fantasy 14's pvp where what they do is they um kind of like you don't have item level you're just kind of all the same level with the same stats depending on your job class and you just kind of like send people like flying at each other basically and there's no advantage to say someone who has a max vc or a max esper yeah i think that'd be a great idea it should be the next one next tournament guys no <laughs> esper, no <vision. laughs> um if you guys don't know uh long time does have a uh live pvp <clears throat> server um and i will be posting that in chat when we do get to prodigy i do just realize too coffee where can people watch you at so at the the at name underneath my image it'll be twitch.tv indiegoo coffee and so you guys can check me out there. Uh, I usually stream about 4, 4.30 Eastern. 
uh, which is basically about 30 minutes to an hour prior to Guild Wars. And so you can catch me there. And I'm curious, where did the name Coffee come from? <laughs> so Coffee, uh, my Korean name is Wondu. And then it's two different meanings. My parents obviously gave me a different meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. But if you just go off like a basic Korean translation of cough of one do it's a coffee bean oh so yeah so that's just how it kind of stuck with me ever since i was younger and so uh that's why the name's coffee <laughs> we're, we're getting all the korean in chat right now <laughs> <laughs> there we go I see him yeah, they know they know div is so excited that he's not the only korean <laughs> I'm just a uh, super clunky. That's why. <laughs> um, and then, are you a real coffee fan? I am. Um, I think I drink about, I want to say, at least four to five glasses of espresso a day, uh, just due to not only work, but then after I get done with work, I yeah. get on and stream. And so, if I don't have it, I think I get like headaches. I don't even know. Yeah. What do you What do you do? For, are you a Do you work as a barista or? No, I don't. Um, I actually work as a. <laughs> I actually work as like a budget analyst slash uh, financial resources manager. And so oh my that's, gosh, that's my day, my normal. Yeah. And then I get to be something different uh, once I'm done with work. So <laughs> oh fun. Um, do you just drink espresso mostly, or do you drink specifically coffee? So I drink espressos in the morning, uh, but then right before stream and stuff, I usually get like a ice, uh, like a ice vanilla latte, something like this, and then okay. Yeah, do you do you have a specific region that you like your coffee from? Oh, or a specific style. So, like, I know my favorite is uh, both uh, Viet iced coffee or Vietnamese coffee, um, mm -hmm. just because I love the flavor notes from them, uh, yeah. even though it's so damn expensive. Uh, <laughs> Definitely great coffee. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I don't think I have like necessarily a favorite usually I, we try to go to like different um different coffee shops and then they usually especially in the virginia area uh they sell like their own brand and so we usually tend to just go to like coffee shop to coffee shop and just pick up a different brand and then come home and try it and that's you and your wife right yes did you recently get married or have you guys been married for a while so in a couple of days actually it's going to be five years for us oh my gosh that's so exciting yeah. What are what are you what are you doing to treat her, or what is she doing to treat you? Mm, that is a good question. I mean, Ruin Stern is coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> does, does she play War of the Visions with you? She does not. Um, outside of streaming, uh, she had no idea what I was playing. I was always like autoing on the phone, and she never, uh -huh. you know, worried about it. But then once I started getting into streaming. Then she started saying, "Oh, what's Vizior? What what is oh, uh, its no! characters? What are like? Why do you have only three hundred? And some people have like <laughs> twenty thousand. I'm like, <laughs> does, so I'm like, oh wait, I gotta be careful now. Does does she know how much you spend on the game? <laughs> she does not. Oh no! <laughs> Would you ever tell her? Probably not. <laughs> no. Is she watching this stream right now? Probably. Am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, she <laughs> is she in there? Oh no! Yeah, oh, yeah. we're gonna so see her come behind you and just take you down here in a second. Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Twenty k plus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to end a marriage. No, I just I love. <laughs> if you guys don't see me tomorrow stream, you know what happened, right? <laughs> I mean, I think there's many people who can't control their spending who have gotten in trouble with their wives or husbands uh, many <laughs> times, uh, myself included. Um, for those of you guys that don't know, Giant does control the purse. So, um, <laughs> oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Coffee. Is there anything else you want to tell chat or um, anything else before you take off? Oh, uh, definitely. Um, you know, make sure you guys always continue to support all the streamers out on WOTIF. Uh, they're trying to put out good content and definitely the support encourages them uh, to keep doing it. Um, I will be hosting an event tomorrow. Uh, so I hope everybody comes Ooh, out. What type of an event? <laughs> so I will be doing a giveaway for the six month anniversary as well as for hitting affiliate with Twitch. Ooh! Um, 
Yep, all the support. Hold on, oh, you got you got to get all the loves in chat. You got to get all the loves in chat for an affiliate. <laughs> <laughs> have you gotten your first subscribers yet? I have actually. Okay. Um, surprisingly, I've gotten a lot more subscribers than I expected, and so. You know, I, that just goes to show how much uh, the, com the community supports uh, different content creators on. So I think it's an amazing community that we have in Warwick. Awesome. And what time can they see you tomorrow? You can see me tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, which is one hour prior to Guild Wars, if you're not familiar with uh, Eastern time. Uh, make sure you guys come to the channel as I'll be giving away, uh, doing four different giveaways randomly throughout the stream. Uh, just make sure you hit that follow button also so you can get put into the entry and just let me know. So I hope to see you guys there. And also support Eden of Gaming. They're awesome. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Do you have um, Eden of Gaming's Discord so that people can uh, come and join uh, once we get you uh, away from here? Oh, I do not. If I know there's people from Eden in here. If you guys could throw that in the chat, guys. <laughs> Eden people, get on it. Coffee is. <laughs> um, because it is an open community, I'm in there as well. Um, you got <laughs> Visipor is gonna start posting their links saying that they're uh, <laughs> <laughs> saying that they're Eden. Um, but make sure you guys go and support um, the Eden of Gaming community. Uh, they're very similar to the Mole Colony. If you guys have ever been to my Discord, uh, they have variety of streamers, variety of games, and uh, they're pretty chill. Uh, I would definitely go and see them. Yeah, we're still waiting for you to come over to Eden, Dicks. <laughs> I'm there. I'm not. So I'll never go to Eden. I will well, never, I will never join Eden, uh, because I do run my own guild. Um, because I feel like as a content creator, it's my responsibility to run my own guild. Fair um, enough, fair enough. <laughs> but if I were to join a guild, it would not be Eden. Um, oh, as much as right. I love, as much as I love you guys, if I had to join <laughs> another guild, it would probably be in the sector seven community. Uh, just because I've been with them probably as long as the mole colonies existed. Um, but after that, maybe I would look at Eden or Visipor. I think all of them, I think all of them would be good guilds to join. If you guys haven't seen my video on all the different discords, we do have the public discord video where it lists all the discords you guys can join. So make sure to go check that out as well. Coffee, thanks for coming on the stream. Thanks for being I here. It. I loved having you on and talking to you and I look forward to collaborating with you more in the future. All right, we're gonna go ahead and switch to the pre-show and we will get ready for Tadif coming up next. I'm gonna take a quick bathroom break as well, you guys. So we'll see you in uh, just a minute. Run after this stream, the wife is coming for you. Yeah, I'm <laughs>